Good morning, everyone. I have a couple of things I wanted to discuss today, and then I'm going to jump into the open Zoom as usual. Um, basically, some of this stuff is just related to the show that uh, Capro and Cal Lazarus had previously done, and specifically uh, John Clymer and uh, the picture that Shiloh showed. I'm not going to get into the other stuff that they discussed, but you can go check out their show if you want to see it. Um, I'm going to focus mainly on what I believe are some connections with John uh, Ford Clymer uh, that they mentioned that's in that sleeve that's sitting behind the the uh, vase, the glass vase with the flowers in it. Um, in order to discuss that, I want to go over a couple of things uh, briefly first. So let me get started. Okay, uh, for those of you that don't know, um, back in 2018, well, actually, let me back up a little bit. Over the chase, if you've been in it for any extended period of time, you all heard the story about Joseph Henry Sharp's cabin and the hammer, the claw hammer that's in there. It was discussed, I believe, either in, in uh, one of the uh, Boris Gets Mail or it was discussed in one of his books. I don't remember. He did not have a scrapbook. Uh, about it until Scrapbook 207. And, and basically, the brief story is that uh, the Joseph Henry Sharp cabin was near the confluence of the Little Bighorn and Bighorn Rivers on the Crow Reservation, just above uh, in the Bighorn Mountains, just above where the Medicine Wheel is. That's the Crow Reservation there. And right where uh, the Little Bighorn meets the Bighorn River near the Custer Battlefield is where Joseph Henry Sharp cabin was. Uh, Forrest Fenn, as you know, purchased his entire estate. He purchased Joseph Henry Sharp's estate, and he also purchased the cabin. And eventually had the cabin moved from uh, Montana down into the Cody Museum, where it's there on exhibit, along with a couple of other things that Forrest Fenn had had. And he told a story somewhere. I, I know he wrote it down. I don't remember where, though, about the hammer. What happened was when they were preparing to, the, uh, to move the uh, cabin, they found the hammer, the one that's in this image. Uh, and I'll explain where this image came from brief in a minute. Um, they found the hammer under the foundation. And I guess for uh, spiritual reasons or whatever, uh, Boris Fenn wanted them, when they moved the cabin, to put the hammer back under the foundation in Cody and don't remove it. So... Uh, that's what he told them to do. Uh, he had the cabin moved there, I believe, sometime in 1986. Um, well, what happened was uh, he went back to the museum, and I believe he was with his father at the time, but he went back there, um, and they had the hammer on display. <laughs> so he got mad, and he talks about this in detail. He got mad, and he went in there and told them, I told you not to put the hammer. I want the hammer under there. So he literally grabbed one of the curators, and, and I'll get to this in a minute. And they went out, and they put the hammer under the foundation. Now, he gave me a little bit more detail. They actually dug on the side and shoved it underneath the uh, foundation. Um, so that was that. So the hammer was there. Now, in 2018, Ramblin' Pam did an interview, a video interview with Forrest, and they discussed the hammer. So it brought the hammer back to my mind, and it just so happened that we were looking along Cody Road out the east gate of Yellowstone up by Sleeping Giant, and we had a couple other things that would go out to research, and everything kept sending me to the Cody Museum. Now, obviously, we all know that the treasure chest was not associated with structure, so the treasure chest is not in or about any, any structure. But we believe always that there is, there is hints there are clues. Think of the treasure hunt as a scavenger hunt, right? You discover a clue, it sends you to the location, and on site, there are hints. So that was our thinking. And primarily, in the basement of that museum is what they call the McCracken Research Center. And incidentally, that McCracken there is tied to uh, the Whitney Art Museum. It doesn't have anything to do with the McCracken that, that sued for us. They're completely two different people. I believe the McCracken that sued him is a British guy, 
and he lives in Florida. <clears throat> but he's not related to to Harold McCracken that you see mentioned uh, in the in the past. He he is tied to the Whitney Art Museum in the Buffalo Bill Center. So we've always believed that there was uh, something in the McCracken Research Center you had to see, or something at one of uh, the exhibits in there. Because, like I said, Forrest and Peggy Penn, <laughs> Forrest and Peggy Penn donate a lot of stuff to the museum. And it's funny because you can actually go in the south exit, which takes you to the top floor, and read the poem. And if you use the blaze Forrest Fenn or Forrest and Peggy Fenn, the poem takes you from exhibit to exhibit, all the way down the museum, out right out the door, right to the cabin. Okay? The cabin is the last exhibit, and it's right outside the firearms museum. There's a pair of glass doors. You open the glass doors, follow the sidewalk, and that's the only thing there is the cabin. Anyhow, um, my partner, of course, he he was there before years ago, and he, he does a lot of work for the museum as a professional, a, aside from this has nothing to, to do with the chase. So he was there before. So so basically I sent him there, and he told me about the cabin. And when you, when you walk in the cabin's door, okay, you're surrounded by glass. You can't you can't walk around the cabin. Now, as you know, Forrest Fan always said, I don't like, you know, having things behind ropes. Or I want people to be able to touch it. So I kind of put Forrest on the spot when I emailed him and I said, Hey, you know, we're gonna go visit go to the museum and um be prepared for a phone call because we want to go in the cabin. And I said, We're gonna look up search out one of the curators. And um, the curator wasn't there, so unfortunately, we were not able to get in the cabin. But I communicated back and forth to Forrest about it, and I'll show you those emails uh, in a minute. So basically, the gist of it is that the hammer moved again. It wasn't under the foundation where he had said he hit it. It's under, um, I call it a trap door, but it, what it is, that they need to um, keep the, the cabin uh, uh, free of moisture and it cooled, right? Because otherwise it'll rot. So they have an air conditioning system. It's in the back of the cabin. And the ductwork, of course, runs under the floor. So the trap door under Sharp's desk is actually an access panel to the air conditioning system. Obviously, they didn't put because it's because you could see it underneath the, the uh the sharp desk. So I told Forrest that I want to see what's in that trap door. I and mean, I want to see What's on? I'm not going to touch anything, but I want to take close up pictures of everything inside of there. And I know to have done it before in that museum because I've seen um, pottery people and stuff. You go in there with a curator and they'll watch you, and they were taking pictures and they used it on their website. So I know it's possible. It's just that they don't normally let people in there. And I figured, well, uh, if Forrest doesn't want to be a hypocrite, then he's got to let me in there because otherwise, why is he? talking about showing people things and he's refusing to let me in there. So so anyway, that that was the reason why I emailed them, just to prepare him. And like I said, ultimately the only person that was there was the curator assistant. So we didn't get access in there. But we did get um uh we did get to uh talk to Forrest as a result via email and also talk to the curator assistant. And we assisted for his friend with scrapbook 207. And I have that scrapbook here and I'll show it to you. And let me show you the emails that I had with Forrest first. Now, these emails, I added them because I don't want my partner's name out there. So where I seen his name, I changed it to J or the uh, uh, partner. So I had to edit some stuff like that. And of course, I edited my email address out of there and replaced it with my name. Um, now, keep in mind, this the title is Private and Confidential, Need Help. So the titles need help. I put the Private and Confidential in there because Forrest Friend suggested that I do it anytime I email him so that he knows nobody but him should look at it. So in other words, I control the privacy and confidentiality of this email, not Forrest. So therefore, I can release it. Uh, Forrest is dead, and I'm the one that made it Private and Confidential. So in September 23rd, you can see the dates here. I'm not going to read everything. I told Forrest, I'm not sure what to do. We're at the museum right now, but Karen McWhorter, the curator, 
It's not there, and they can't locate her assistant. The security guard won't let anyone into the cabin and look around, but did say that if the curator gives permission, we can. They just don't want people in there without permission, which is understandable. We did not mention the treasure chest to the guard or anyone, but we were hoping to be able to get in and at least check out the hammer and also some of the items in and around the cabin. I know in the video from last year, now that was the video I just talked about, what they did with Pam, uh, Ramblin' Pam in 2018, that the ability to research some things in there require your permission. In other words, he says in Pam's video that the only way to see certain things in that museum is to get permission directly from Forrest Fan. So ultimately what I'm doing is requesting his permission here in order to, to get details about that cabin. As I said, within the cabin proper. I know I asked this before, but is there a way we could get in a cabin and look around? I thought this was funny. <laughs> but, uh, how do you know about the hammer? Yeah, right. <laughs> that was, I, I was like laughing, thinking, about, oh, come on, boys. come on, man. How do I know about the hammer, right? So he responded, yeah, like two hours after I sent the email. Um, so I went back and I showed it to him, hammer. In the uh, McCracken Research Center, Series 2, Photograph Slides, Negatives and Transparencies in Box 7, um, P.22.1455. Sharp. Now, this is the only place that the, the hammers mentioned, and it doesn't have a picture. Now, this is Sharp Pro Agency, date stamp, December 1986. And this is a quote that Forrest Fenn put in there. The hammer was found to the right of the door shown in this picture. Now, the door you saw, and I believe, is from the, the front entrance of the cabin, which is exactly where Sharp's desk is. I don't know if it was lost when the cabin was built or when the addition was put on. That's all he says in there about the cabin, about the uh, hammer. And then if you go to Pam, Ramblin' and Pam's video, here's the link. Okay. Um, two minutes, 10 seconds in, they discuss it being put under the floor. Plus, I, I just mean emailing for us. Plus, I don't remember where, but I'm almost positive we spoke about the armor elsewhere in the past prior to Pam's video. In addition to that, the attached picture from Too Far to Walk is how I believe the treasure chest is hidden. Um, that's the picture with the, the native Indian lady uh, lifting up a lid and reaching under her ground to grab the treasure chest. So I believe that's how the treasure chest is hidden. And I believe that, there, like I said, there's something at that museum that you have to see that'll either describe the ending place or you'll know where to go. And I said, note that I am not looking for confirmation. I would simply like to look there and at least get a shot of the hammer. Also under Sharp's desk is a trap door with a latch on it. Now, the time I wrote this letter, I did not realize the hammer was under that trap door and neither did Forrest Fenn. It's interesting. If standing outside the cabin facing the front door, the trap door is on the right, after entering a door right beneath the desk, I attached a picture and I showed him where the trap door or the access panel is. And I said, I believe that the hammer and maybe the chest might be beneath that door. My partner is there. He's listening to the PA. They have a PA system and they'll say like, ah, phone call on blah, blah, blah. So my, my partner was there waiting to get permission. Um, then I sent him another update. Karen was not there. And again, Karen's the curator but her assistant was available. They would not let anyone inside the cabin without approval, but she informed us that the trap door under Sharp's desk is not locked, and she has seen the only thing under the floor beneath that door is the hammer. The treasure is not within the museum or under the cabin. Yeah, whatever. Um, like I said, I didn't believe that the treasure chest was under there because it's a structure, but I believe that there was something in there that tells you more details about either how or where to try to best to say them. So Forrest Fenn replies back to me, and he says, it is my memory that the curator and I dug a tunnel and put the hammer under the floor. I am writing a story about that. Now, this, he was talking about Scrapbook 207 here. Didn't come out yet. I am writing a story about that and don't want to be wrong. What information do you have about where the hammer is today? Now, I thought that that was interesting because here's a man that can pick up the phone and call up the museum and find out quick. Why is he, you know, he's not telling me to stay away from there. In fact, he's asking me for more information. 
So I, I got a hold. I, I told him I'll get a hold of my partner here. I reply back. I'll double check with my partner because he was there for me with his daughter. But from what what we talked about, Karen McWhorter, who is who Nancy told us to speak with. I think she's the curator of the Whitney. Anyway, she is not there all week and never returned Jay. That's my partner's phone calls. But Jay went anyway. He spoke with security and they were able to locate Karen's assistant. She told Jay that she could not listen to the cabin, but that she and other employees have seen the hammer and that the hammer is under a trap door beneath sharp desk. She also said that we we could still request permission to get in the cabin. But today, that day, September 24th, is the day they start emptying the cabin out for the winter. So we would not be able to photograph the items on Sharp's desk if we didn't do it right away. So I talked to my partner, and um, I believe he went back there. So anyway, I, I, I told him, let me confirm all that, what I just said. So I called up my partner, Jay, and he, he confirmed everything here. The person he spoke with was Nicole Harrison. Not sure about the spelling. She's Karen's assistant the curator. Nicole told my partner that the hammer is under the floor beneath the trap door that is below the desk. Meanwhile, Karen just called my partner. He is calling her back now to see what she has to say. So I don't know about any tunnel, but I do know that the trap door with a horseshoe-shaped handle um, that's screwed to the floor is where the hammer is today. Keep in mind, this is what they told us. Sadly, we're not able to get to the cabin from the two side doors. We wanted to see and photograph the hammer. And of course, we also thought the chest was there near nearby. Um, attached is another shot where you can see the trap door. Um, so my partner gets off the phone with um, Karen. She asked Nicole to do more research about the hammer to find out when it was placed there. Now, I'm going to speculate here, and I believe that Karen heard that this happened with the hammer in the past, and she might have caught a little bit of help for it. I don't know. But this ain't the first time Forrest Fenn was curious about the hammer that keeps moving around. So right now, she confirmed the hammer is under the trap door below the desk, and I told her she sounded perturbed and indicated that many searchers end up at the museum, and they do not encourage people to look there. Now, this is where I want to interrupt here. <laughs> at the exact same week or same time that we were there, I know for sure, because he did a video about it, that Eugene was there showing uh, Cynthia around. And they're not the only ones that go there. A lot of people go to the Cody Museum. And I was kind of a little bit annoyed because here, you know, it's um, it's Karen's job to to answer questions for people. That's her job, right? Um, you know, and she, if anything, she should be happy that Forrest Fenn is sending people to the museum. You know, so she she didn't sound happy that people were coming there. And I believe it's because, like, the search season just started. My, I mean, the search season's, you know, going full swing. My partner's there, okay. And he he was, you know, he didn't even talk to her other than this phone call that he left because um, he spoke to the assistant about getting in there. And for some reason, she got offended by all the people that come around there. And um, I later found out more information about that from Forrest, where he said, basically, don't, don't worry about it. Um, this, this is where he said, they say you're a good guy. Now, I don't know who they are, but um, basically, the museum was pissed off. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess here that it was due to uh, Eugene and Cynthia. Because Eugene goes around with a big camera and, you know, no offense, Eugene, but I mean, he's, I mean, that's his life, that museum. He probably knows more about that museum than anyone, but in the process, I guess it looks like he made a lot of enemies there based on what I heard from, from Forrest. Because he told me not to worry about it because I was mad. That was the first time I ever actually argued with Forrest right out. You know, because he said, you know, I have a lot of friends there. And I basically told him, I don't give a fuck about your friends. I said, I didn't say it like that. I said, well, it's not just your fucking friends. I said, these people don't even know me, Forrest. You tell me to find that information. I attempt to do that. And I can't tell. It's not fucking fair. I didn't do nothing wrong to these fucking people. They never met me. We never called them, you know. Um, and this that was in response to the scrapbook. Um, and I'll show you why. Um, and that was when Forrest replied. He goes, don't worry about it. Um, th there's no problem with you. And then he, he updated the scrapbook. I, I think 
a lot of people believe that the treasure chest is in there. And I told my partner, I don't necessarily think the chest is in there. You know, it, it could be. I don't think it's there, but I do believe that there's a hint. There's something in that museum that we have to see. And, Lord, I'm not the only person that thinks that. I believe um, Tyler. I mean, the list goes on and on, the number of people that are looking there. But my point is, is that Florida, it's hypocritical to say that you like people to see things. And here's an instance where you have a searcher trying to see things and never got to see it because it's behind glass. It's roped off. I couldn't get permission because the curator wasn't there. And then the curator shows up and gives us a bunch of shit. So basically, he told me that I, uh, what I think happened is she got confused. There was multiple people there besides us. And she put, I guess she thought that we were a group. I don't know. But that, that really made me mad. Um, anyway, when we hear the results from uh, Nicole and Karen, I'll pass it along the bars. I said, but right now, the only place I see the hammer even mentioned within the complex is in the research center under MS-022, and you can check it online if you go here. Um, you can log into the McCracken Research Center and see everything that's been there. And um, I mentioned it again here. Uh, and then I ended up here uh, September 24th. Boris, by the way, I'm very sorry if me looking in the museum has caused problems. I didn't do anything that should have upset them, but maybe they grew wary of all the chase people looking nearby. I also want to point out that something else is missing. Normally on top of the tall Roy Crofter's shelf next to the desk is a bird casting by Rockwood. That's that bird that's a crow. I've showed it many times before. It sits on a shelf. Um, this is not within the cabin any longer. I do not know if they cycle through certain sharp items, but the Rockwood crow caught my eye. It looks like the bird and the axe man plus the moon drawing in the thrill of the chase. The Roy Crofter furniture within the cabin itself caught my eye because the Roy Crofter symbol is the same symbol that's on the treasure chest. Basically, the symbol for Roy Crofter is um, the, what the hell is it called? The Cross of Lorraine. The, the symbol of the Cross of Lorraine, the exact symbol, even one of the legs short, is on all that furniture in the Joseph Henry Sharp cabin. And there's a connection between the Roy Crofter stuff and just remember chart so it's the same symbol as on the treasure chest that's lying that's that one i was just talking about with the woman reaching in a hole if you look on the side of the treasure chest there's a roy crofter symbol there or the uh cross of lorraine so do about a month after is when forrest a couple weeks later forrest upgraded updated the scrapbook and there was an annoying message in there that it annoyed me and i went back to forrest <clears throat> and I was really pissed because I knew, like I said, there was other people there specifically. And I mean, we didn't go there bringing cameras and fucking tripods and walking around with an audience and walking around like your king shit, you know, like I imagine Eugene might have done um, with uh, Cynthia there. But it was just a, a combination of all of that that was going on. I guess there were other searchers there that year, too. But in the end, I mean, let's face it, that's the museum's job, to field questions. And I think they should be happy that Forrest was sending there. Uh, and I put that in my video because I did two videos about this. I did one nice video before my partner went there. And then after I seen the update, I did a little bit more harsh video because I, I, I haven't was ha having what the, that millennial Karen was saying. Uh, just do your job and shut up. Basically, is what I was saying. I was mad, but like I said, Forrest then confirmed that no, there's no, there's no ill feelings between anybody and Cody and me or my part. We didn't ultimately. We're not the source of their issue, um, because like I said, could you imagine that Forrest went, "Hey, next time you're over there, check this out for me. Let me know what you find out." And then you go and do exactly what he said, and then they fuck a bitch about you. I'm like, what the fuck? Anyway, so let me show you the scrapbook just briefly. I'm not going to go through, uh, through the whole thing. It's Scrapbook 207, and he basically discusses Joseph Henry Sharp and the books that he did, and he talks about it. 
And he shows a picture of the uh, he shows a picture of uh, the hammer. Oh, not right away. Keep this when he did the scrapbook was before Karen updated it. Before Karen came back, as you can see, there's no pictures here, just a cabin. When you walk in the store, um, and you look to the right. Joseph Henry Sharp's desk is over here, and it's under the floor is where the trap door is. But when you walk in here, there's a glass wall here, a glass wall here, and a glass wall here. You can't leave the door entrance way. Um, these two doors are locked on the side. There used to be like a lean-to on the side over here, and that's where the kitchen was. Okay. Uh, right, you see this shelf? That's where the the uh, crow is, up on top of the shelf. And we wanted to get in there and photograph all of this stuff that's in the scrapbook. But right under this desk is where the access panel is. And of course, you got this trunk here. We wanted to go in there and not, not oh, I mean, touch things, photograph it. Why not, right? And Forrest Fenn didn't seem like he wouldn't agree to it. It's just that there was no curator there that day. And unfortunately, that day, the next day, the 24th, is the day they, they close the cabin up. And they move all this shit out of here for the winter. So that's a story we did. That's what we helped them with. I was kind of proud of that. Okay. But here we go now. Um, I, I think that this is directed at Eugene because Eugene believes that the... Uh, the chest is at that museum. He still believes it today. Anyway, here's uh, October 14th, Karen. And this is what pissed me off. And for, Boris Frank confirmed that this was not about me. So I'm happy about that because I was pissed at him. I'm like, because he's like, I got a lot of friends there. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. What about me? Now they hate me there. And he's like, no, no, no. What, what makes you think that? And I told him, I said, Boris, look what you put in the scrapbook. And I said, I just did a video. And he said, but you're not the only one that did a video. But he goes, you know, he said, don't worry about it. He goes, they tell me you're a good guy. I, I want to make sure you're aware. And lately, that several people looking for the Fen treasure came by and contacted the center of the West, hoping to gain access to the sharp cabin to view the hammer kept in the crawl space under the floorboards. Right there, Karen, you're wrong, because that's not where it was originally. One gentleman spoke to several staffers on the phone and then proceeded to misinterpret our conversation. Now, that definitely is not me, because I was never there. My partner was there, and he didn't, he didn't, doesn't do videos. So, I don't know, I mean, like I said, I think, like I said, that that's in relation to what was going on. Just all the people that were there. Mainly people walking around with cameras, tripods, you know. But But again, even though there's nothing really wrong with that, I mean, that's Karen's job. So she's down here. I wonder if you could, we could request your help with this other inquiries. Confirming that the public treasure is not buried at the center. And her, may I make an image of the hammer available to the public? Second of all, Karen, if you see this, I'm the only one that was inquiring about the hammer. Unless she's talking about the prior wear. Because I'm sure when uh, Pam, Ramblin' Pam made the video, a lot of people were interested in the hammer. So here's a picture of the hammer. We finally got it. And I don't know how, I don't know if that's in situ under the uh, crawl space. I don't know. Um, you know, I'm still kind of miffed that we weren't able to get in the cabin. I think that was a hypocritical move. But this, this pissed me off right here. Because when I first read it, I went back to Forrest. I'm not going to show those emails because, um, I, I mean, I was really ripping into them. Because, I mean, I, I, you know, Forrest friend is just a man like everybody else. Puts his pants on one leg at a time. He makes mistakes, you know. But I was pissed because he, here he's telling me, let me know what you find out. He's telling me how he had the hammer. And he, and he did that after I told him it was under the trap door. In other words, alluding to the fact that it wasn't there. Please find out. If you find any information, let me know. I'm going to do a story about this. And I go and, and I do that. And he goes, no, no, no. They're, they're not. She's not talking about you. He says he's talking about several people in general. They've been getting hit pretty hard, a lot of people. And then I went back to Forrest. I said, frankly, Forrest, I don't care. 
I said, she's a, she's a curator at the museum. That's her job. Should she be mad at you, Forrest, for sending traffic to the museum? Um, she should be happy about it. As long as they're not breaking things and destroying things, I don't see the problem. I mean, I, why else did Forrest Fenn put that stuff there other than for people to look at it? It, it amazed me, and I was really mad. Luckily, Forrest didn't get mad at me because we still continued to email after this. In fact, that was when I, I talked to him about me. Because after this event occurred, that's when I went back to uh, Sam Smith, basically, and gave up around Cody Road and went back to him. And I believe that all of these references, including Joseph Emery Sharp, are all references to the Plains Indians, specifically the Crow, and specifically the Bighorn Medicine Wheel. Um, and, um, yeah, whatever. So, yeah, you can go check out the scrapbook. It's on Dow's website, the lummyfilm.com slash DL slash, and then inside there, you'll see all the scrapbooks, um, and you can download it in there. So let me show you, uh, uh, let me show you one more thing. I don't have the window set up yet. Give me a second. And then I'll fire up Zoom. Um, let's see. Okay, that's it. <clears throat> All right, so I showed this before in my earlier video. This is um, uh, some man's collection named Eddie Basha. Um, and he's got a whole bunch of collection of um, uh, John Ford Climber, which is that that book that that uh, Cape Row was talking about. Somebody discovered that that sleeve is a reference to John Ford Climber book, and I mentioned the name of that book. So I did just a little bit of research from this guy, and if you look at here, you can see a good sampling of all of his paintings, and a lot of all of them are associated around animals and Indians trappers um and he seems to show a lot of bighorn rams um just something that i took notice of um and of course indians out there hunting there's another bighorn sheep these are sheep eater indians um and as you know the sheep eaters originally lived up on medicine mountain um so the reason why I made that is because of the fact that you see how easy it is to take these things and twist them to a solve. But if you combine this with Joseph Henry Sharp, there's uh, Sacagawea. Uh, if you combine this with Joseph Henry Sharp, that it's clear that Forest Friends hints are related to artwork. Okay. A lot of them point to the Cody Museum, which means there's likely to be hints there. And um, the Crow primarily, and Little Bighorn, Sitting Bull, all of that stuff took place um, on the Crow Reservation there. There's another Bighorn Ram. These are the horns, incidentally. They would cut these horns off and hollow them out, and they used them as hearing devices. There's a canyon of water going through it. It's Fitzpat uh, Fitzpat Devil's Gate, Fitzpatrick, at Devil's Gate. So it wasn't only in Wyoming. He painted all over the place. The Peace Pipe, Traders on the South Pass. You could go. I left a link to this in the other one. And then, of course, there's another one over here. Um, there's another person's collection. And here's one that he actually won an award for, um, a gold medal for oils at the Cowboy Artists of America exhibit in 1975. Um, this this video won a medal, um, a gold medal for um, John Clymer. And it's depicting um, John Coulter visiting the Crow Indians in 1807. Um, and he's going up the Bighorn River. You could, you could read all of this stuff. Um, he gives a history about a lot of this, these paintings and stuff like that. Same thing on the previous uh, page, and they're talking about 
the confluence of the Bighorn and Yellowstone River, the forts that they had there, and so on, and all and all of this stuff. Um, like I said, it's all it's all hinting at the Bighorn Mountains, in my opinion. But either way, it's it's certainly hinting at um, Plains Indians, which is what I believe the whole hunt is about. Because Forrest Friend even started his collection with the Arrowhead. And he also says in Goldemore that the reason for the chase is that he wants to give everybody else an experience, a chance to experience what he did in building his massive collection. Um, so, yeah, there you go. So, yeah, this, this stuff, it, it annoyed me. It made me glad at first that I was helping. I felt I was helping for his friend. He told me to give him information, whatever we found. And I thought it was pretty cool. <clears throat> and he seemed to show an interest in the hammer. And there is no denying, like I said, I know. Matter of fact, what triggered me to go live today is what uh, Tyler said. Uh, Tyler said he's got some things he wants to talk about. And as you know, Tyler's looking up in Cody. I believe that um, this same is true with Galaxy, although I, I can't confirm that. But, but needless to say, there's a ton of people at, at Cody. Probably the same amount of people that are up in um, Yellowstone. It's just everybody flocks to Cody. Um, and in our case, the poem actually starts at the East Gate, takes you down Cody Road, takes you in the south entrance, brings you through all of the Forest Friend exhibits, and it ends at the last exhibit, which is the Sharp Cabin, and right in there. So what I believe is that there was either a proxy in there, there was something in there near the hammer. And the proxy would send you to, to the real treasure chest location, which obviously would not be part of the structure. That's ultimately what I believe in. That's what I told Boris. So that's that. And by the way, I think I showed those emails before. So let me see what's going on. And I am, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, Chad, I don't, when I'm doing these uh, talks like this, I, I don't have Chad up here and I don't see what you're saying. And I'm trying not to distract myself, but I'll bring the chat up now. Just give me a second to shut all this down and switch to Zoom. Uh, and I don't know how long I'll be live. I don't know if anybody's going to show up uh, or what have you. I, I wasn't even going to go live today, but I decided I would. Why not? Um, let's see. Me a second. Um, the other thing is, let me know in chat. I know I'm having a problem with my microphone. For some reason, I think it might be the jack itself on the computer. Uh, it's a stereo mic, and I think sometimes one of the channels is cut out. And when it does, I got to kind of move the the cord around. It's not the cord itself, though. It's a jack in the computer, and it's a laptop, so it's a pain in the ass to get in there. It's probably got some dust or something on it inside of it, and I got to clean it out. So let me know if something um, sounds weird with my uh, audio, and I'll take care of it. So let me put this in chat. As soon as somebody gets in, I'll probably rudely <laughs> go have a cigarette when they get in. But uh, hey, so give me a, give me a second again. Let me uh, shut down everything that I have open. So, yeah, I, I don't know how many of you knew about the Scrapbook 207. I talked about it in the past. I thought it was cool. I was pretty proud of myself. Hey, you know, Forrest Benson, when does he ask people to help him with something like that indirectly? And and I was proud of it. And then the Scrapbook comes out. I'm proud of it. And then that asshole. Yeah, Karen, I think you're an asshole. Um, 
you know, come out with that. But I, I actually, let me take that back. I apologize to Karen because it wasn't me that she was referring to. I thought it was me. But Boris friend told me right up it wasn't me. So I felt bad to the point. Like I said, I was arguing with Boris. And I wasn't being nice in the email because, you know, he goes, I got a lot of friends. And I said, yeah, I know you do. I said, but look at, look at my fucking position. I don't have friends. I never met the people. I was never there. I said, I'm trying to do this. And now I'm going to catch out for this. That's bullshit for us. I said, what about everybody else? And I was mad. And I guess he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. There's no need to be mad. And, you know, uh, it, that, that was kind of cool. Um, I'm not going to show those emails because they're, they're too personal. And frankly, I don't want you to see the way I was talking. I was mad. I was mad. Let's just put it that way. Um, but everything ended up being cool. And, you know, I I don't understand. Like I said, the museum, boy, somebody really must fucking be bothering them for them to come out and do something like that. Um, you know, I mean, like I said, it's it's their job to answer questions for people. That's their job. It's not an option. And in my opinion, they should be happy that Forrest Men is sending people their way. Why would you discourage it? You know? Now I, I know like I can imagine if it's true, Eugene's sitting there with a, a tripod. And it's a good thing, Eugene, that you're in chat because I don't know. I know for a fact, because you did a video about it, you were there that week with um with uh, uh Cynthia. And just throwing her around. Nobody's saying that you did anything wrong, but apparently not only were you there with Cynthia and my partner was there with his daughter, but apparently other people were searching there too. And the museum just like all of a sudden freaked out. The only thing I could say is that they didn't know the story way back in 1986. Hell, Karen wasn't even alive in 1986 probably. But anyway, they didn't know that story. And somebody in the museum probably told them that Forrest Wren got bent out of shape when they moved the hammer. And here we go, the hammer moved again. So from Karen's perspective, she would look at like, well, here are these people. They're getting me in trouble with Forrest Wren, who's got a lot of clout here, and she wasn't having any part of it. That's what I, I believe happened. And that's pure speculation on my part. And I'm still going to go to that museum at some point. But I'm I'm probably going to talk about it when I go there too. I'm, I'm probably going to try to look and find Karen, <clears throat> Nancy. The other I, I forgot her last name. Nancy that works there is a really nice person, and so is um, Karen's curator. I never personally met Karen, but I don't appreciate what she did by lumping everybody in together. You know. Um, so yeah, I don't know what you guys think, but never. Yeah, I, you know, uh, Eugene, that's, by the way, for you to said Golden Key Growers is obviously Eugene. That's Godelkin, right? Yeah, you didn't inquire about the cat, but Ramblin' Pam did. And I think that she might have been referencing Ramblin' Pam, too, because Ramblin' Pam was there. But I inquired. We inquired about the hammer. Sure. Um, but Ramblin' Pam, you got to remember that it was just one year earlier, Ramblin' Pam came out and talked about the hammer at the museum. So when everybody went out the next search season, because it was wintertime or fall when Ramblin' Pam did her video. So, of course, anybody looking at Wyoming the very next year, they went in there and inquired about the hammer. And we were one of them, you know. But I was, you know, like, I mean, come on, man. I mean, the fucking guy, you know, I'm pissed. I mean, I'm sorry. Every time the fucking guy put a whole entire fucking cabin in the museum, a whole cabin. He was on the board. He put all that shit there. And, and we asked one little question about a hammer. And, and I, I, I want you to know that my partner is not like me. My partner has a, is a business. He, he, he kind of got an attitude like Forrest. He's all business. He's got a politically correct filter. I mean, we're polar opposites. But they know him because he does work at the museum. They know him just like they know Forrest. Well, obviously, they know Forrest probably better. But they know him. And nobody was doing anything wrong. So I don't know what the hell. Somebody must have went off. It wasn't us. You can see my, my emails were pretty straightforward back and forth to Forrest. And I told them, you know, that we were going to try to get permission. And boy, 
And, and, and here's the other thing that makes me mad. Go on Google and type in Joseph Henry Sharp's cabin, pottery, or something like that. I forgot. Pottery. Joseph Henry Sharp, cabin, go to museum. And you'll see a picture there of a woman who's just a fan, not at a forest fan chase, but she's a, she runs a local pottery group. And, uh, of course, they had no problem letting her in there. You know, and, and that kind of irks me. It irks me. It's almost like they didn't do it because of the fact that we were searching. And this woman was not a searcher. She was just interested in the rockwood and the rock stuff. But then a searcher comes along. Oh, no, no, we can't have that. Bullshit. Have a time. <laughs> ah, fuck him. What's up, Rob? What's up, Trusted? How's it going? How you doing, Troy? Yeah, I'm doing all right now, and I'm calming down. I, I, boy, that you know that I, I I get so pissed off about that shit because you try to do the right thing, you're nice to everybody, and then what happens? You know, at, but for Forrest, I mean, he calmed me down. It's like, I, don't worry, I, I can assure you they're not talking about you. They tell me you're a good guy, and I felt like asking Forrest, who's they? Because he said that before. Like, I was like they tell me when when that when that shit happened with the. Uh, in the desert issue. It's not in the desert. And I got mad. He said, Do you tell me you're a good guy. Who's who's they? Who's they? Yeah. I don't know. But but like, you know, uh that was when I got really mad. I said, you know what? I told Forrest, fuck it. And I said, I'm going back with Sam. And I said, we're hooking up in December and we're gonna fucking solve this thing or we're gonna give up. Uh, June, the when the search season opens up in June, that's it. That's our last year. And we're going all out at the wheel. I said, based on everything I know now, I believe that Sam was right. And you know the story from there. But I told him, this is it. If we don't find it in 2020, we're done. And I said, honestly, at that point, I'll think it's a hoax. Because I'm oh, serious, oh, man. Wow. Huh? For you to say it's a hoax? Wow. <laughs> well, no. I mean, I, I, I told him it would be a hoax or impossible or just I'm just not getting it. It's too advanced, and I just can't solve it. I said, I'm trying to keep it simple, you know, and 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 that's that. I mean, he re he replied to me a couple times. So I didn't make him mad. He replied to me a couple times. Um, and then, of course, he stopped replying to me a week before the toe-to-toe -to -toe thing came out. Huh. And when I told him that we were going out on June 6, 2020. But... But yeah, I mean that Cody thing. I, I just after seeing what was in the McCracken Research Center, I did find the stuff I wanted, and it's to put the, the hammer out there, and all of that, all of the stuff that I was finding tied me back to the Bighorns, including the hammer, and that's exactly why I went back with Sam. I'm like, it's the fucking thing is at that wheel. I know it is. <laughs> I, and I mean, I'm still, I still believe that, but I can't prove, can't prove anything, but. You it know, sucks when you can't prove it, huh? Yeah, but that John um, Ford climber, that was interesting. You know, the, whoever that woman was that um, I guess she was working with Candy and she discovered that sleeve was actually his book. And and I didn't look at the book. I, I didn't put much effort into it, but I looked and immediately I noticed the guy is painting a ton of fucking rams and he's painting Crow Indian and he's painting <laughs> John Coulter going up the into the Crow Reservation up along the Bighorn River. And and I mean, also he's painting Indians from other places, but that's the same thing Joseph Henry Sharp did, except Joseph Henry Sharp was Crow specifically. He only focused on the Crow, and the United States government hired him to do that, to paint the Crow. And that's exactly what he did. And Forrest Trump wrote two books about Joseph Henry Sharp. I'm like, I thought this has nothing to do. You know, one thing I did do, though, when I looked through all that guy's stuff, I didn't see one fucking picture of brown trout anywhere, <laughs> anywhere in John Clymer. No, you know, there was no trout. Um, and the closest thing to Yellowstone, I believe, was the Nez, what do they call them, Nez, Nez Pierce? Nez, uh, yeah. Where they fought over, I believe it was just north of uh, Old Faithful. Uh, I, I, I could be wrong. I believe there's something associated with them along the Firehole River area up there. But other than that, whatever immediately jumped out to me was Plains Indians. Oh, yeah, that's what the chase is about. Plains Indians. Go figure. What's up, you, don't say, you don't see me. What's happening, everyone? 
Well, I'm going to let you guys shoot shit for while I go out and smoke. Um, yeah. Whatever, whatever you, I don't know if you have any, um, actually, before we get talking, what do you guys, I'll listen outside. What do you guys think about the John Clymer um, and, uh, and about the, uh, the last video that Cal, and I'm not, I'm not saying let's, let's discuss Cal and K-Pro's video. I'm just discussing what do you think about the topics um, that they were discussing there. I, I didn't talk about the uh, controversial stuff, meaning, right. um, you know, but if you yeah. guys wanted to discuss that, that, that's fine. I just, I think that the, uh, the whole uh, binder stuff and, and the auctioneer, auction website is just a bunch of bullshit. And yeah. by, by the way, I, I want to say something out that, um, you, you know, you, you guys, I, I avoided it because I know that it's nothing. There's no, I have nothing good to say about it. But if you, if you guys want to uh, talk about it, that's fine. Whatever you want. But I'll be right back. No problem. How's it going, Street, by the way? Good, man. How's, how's things going your way? Nah, There's what it is. Spring's on its way, man. Yeah, right? I've been doing a lot of work around here. Outside wise, no, but I I watched their show the, the other night. Um, it was interesting about you know the book and all that, but all the other stuff I I just kind of like drift away from it. I, I'm I'm just looking for facts that that's important, not your say. So I mean, it was a pretty good show on, on some part, and I I just think it dragged on a lot without a lot of other proof. Um, Forrest could have put a pile of shit sitting in the middle of a driveway and people would have spent weeks analyzing it and giving their opinions. <laughs> it, it appears Shiloh has taken up the torch. <laughs> yes, I see what he's trying to tell us. There's corn in that shit. He's talking about corn dancers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's, I mean, that that's the monster he created. He created that monster, and, you know, I, I think it worked pretty well to help keep his special spot uh, secret. Oh, beyond a shadow of a doubt, it worked wonders, man. So you're talking about, like, a distraction, basically. Heck Yeah. You know, he said the poem was straightforward and no subterfuge. Well, if that's the case, then I believe that this will never fucking come out the truth. Then, if this is a distraction from the truth, then we'll never get the truth. We might not. Well, how does a how does a good teacher get their students to uh, learn and research, um, get their imagination going? It, the analogy of a pile of shit. Um, it, I guarantee you, people would have said, oh, I see pictures in it. Oh, I think there's letters. Oh, there's some numbers. Oh, let's, um, they, he, no matter what he said or did, um, got people thinking. I know there's somebody in the chase that would have seen faces in that pile of turd. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if that's a diversion of it, then we'll never get the answers. There's no reason to even fucking keep chasing them. Well, think about it. If if you and it applies to Shiloh too. If you thought by reaching out and buddy buddying up to Forge, you could get hints and clues. You could figure out. All I got to do is talk to him personally, not his scrapbooks. They weren't satisfied with scrapbooks, the book. Um, weekly words that never satisfied them. No, they want to get inside there. They, um, isn't that cheating, man? Yeah. Yes, it's cheating. But what? What about the people that didn't cheat? The people that actually tried and and understand life and and, and the big picture. What about them people? I think they're the ones that got the treasure. The 
trove, whatever you want to call it. They're, they're, they never cheated, man. They did the, the, the old school way. They worked for it. Like, like us, we, we all fucking, we, 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 none of us fucking really, I mean, you met Forrest, but it was just like a, a, a how you doing type. But the rest of us that didn't meet, we don't, we, you know, we're not like other people that came in their house looking for hints and clues. This is not a four, four yeah. person show. This is not a four person show at all. This is this is all of us. Yeah, I've heard it all said many times. If you was um, didn't know nothing about the chase, Forrest, he's just a normal person walking down the street. They would not have baited his face the way they did. So that indicates to me, yeah, you were you were trying to shortcut it, not work for it, and basically steal it. Yeah, basically, yeah. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Because, you know, we all put our fucking hours in. Even if we were wrong, we still fucking, you know, we thought we were right in our minds. But we, we never asked for any fucking thing special out of him. Well, is knowledge worth it if you didn't work for it and it was handed to you? Yeah. I don't think so. Oh. How could you apply it if you didn't earn it? You can't. Yeah, I, I think that um, Forrest kind of appreciated when you... Uh, I mean, this is going to sound weird. I don't. I don't think he appreciated like some of the things that I, the way I was saying. But when you tr- treat somebody like that, I, I think they look at you differently because you're not always up his ass. I mean, I went against him hard against him. I mean, you know, I mean, we've been in the chase all that time. Here it is, fucking the end of 2019, and it, I thought it was really cool because I never, like I said, I never met the man. I never did anything other than emails. I never don't know anything about him. You know. I'd never been in his house. And I was like, wow, cool. He's asking me to give him some information. He's going to do a, a, a story. And I assumed it was a scrapbook, you know. And um, and then all that shit happened. I'm like, what the fuck? I was like, well, what the hell did I do? You know, like it, that kind of an attitude. And he's like, ah, you know, don't worry about it. By the way, Street, was that, was that pile of shit near a log? <laughs> yes, and there seems to be a twig nearby. To again yes. and, and, and and combine that with the maze that Justin was just talking about, that means we must be looking for corn, like a corn stalk. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That's how the people people would think. But but I, I mean, on, in all honesty, though, I do believe, even though I didn't use the scrapbooks and I looked at them and all, but I, I I abandoned all that shit in 2017 because it was leading to too many rabbit holes. But I do believe that. Well, that's how it turned out in my sob. When you go to the right place, there's going to be a map and there's going to be information that's going to relate to the poem, even yeah. if the treasure chest is not physically at that spot. And that's the way I was looking at Cody. The treasure chest may not be there, but how do you know that there wasn't a jar, some kind of a proxy in there near the hammer that inside there you take it out and it basically is a title and it says, here's where the chest is. And then you go and get the chest. And maybe the treasure chest is in. You know, uh, that was my thought then. Maybe, you know, it's in um, New Mexico. And, and it's kind of the same thing. So I did believe that. It was like a scavenger hunt that you, the clues led to specific places that you were, were going to find something. That's why I thought the code, and I'm not the only one. I mean, there's many, many, many people that look at that museum. Well, you were on, AG, you were on AGK talking about the proxy item. Yeah, it was in 2018. And, yeah. and you know, I, I just think that that's the way he did it. There's no, I mean, other than what she talks about um, in his uh, idea with knowledge and, and the mind, the, the only other way that there's land ain't an issue would be if you own the land. In other words, it had to be on private property. But there's no way he could put it on private property and then expect somebody to violate the law to go get it. So there had to be some way that you had to gain access and that, that's what led me to believe all of that. And if that were true, that would mean that nobody can get their physical hands on the real trove without Forrest Fan or his estate knowing about it. Because you would have to, to take control of whatever is in the title. You, you'd have to make it legally binding. You'd have to sign it. And once that happened, his estate would be notified that one of the assets changed hands. Now, he doesn't have to know who it changed hands with, but he would know at that point, aha, they got a hold of the title. Chase is over. He doesn't mm-hmm. even have to know who they are. That would have set a barrier. Now, obviously, if he pulled the chest, it's going to change things up. But that that was that was my thought. But, you know, 
there, you know, so it's kind of cool that that I think K Pro and them were looking at that, but they said, you know, um, uh, that they don't, they didn't really have a tie. Like even the person, and I forgot what her name is, the female that found out that that sleeve is related to that book. See, they didn't really have a a tie. Like, what is the meaning? And and that would be my tie right there, Plains and Indians. Um, and the, the paintings, oil paintings, which is a, and the McCracken Research Center, you know, because um, Harold McCracken runs the Whitney Art Museum. Okay, so he was the curator or whatever. Or, uh, he was the, the highest man there in charge of the Whitney Art Museum. That's the connection. And then also you got the McCracken, which is pointing to the McCracken Research Center. I, I ask Eugene about the, the McCracken Research Center. Just, just for just Joseph Henry Sarf alone is, I believe, almost 10 linear shelf space in the McCracken Research Center. And you can't you can't see any of this, according to what what Pam said in the video um, in 2018. And I be, bet you um, Eugene would back me up on this. There's certain things that they will not take out of that um, out of the, the storeroom or whatever and show it to you without permission from Forest Surdy Estate. You literally can't see it. And that's why I was going after Forrest. And I thought, it's interesting that he replied. He wasted no time replying. to me. I mean, how did you find out about the hammer? Because <laughs> that was his first reply to me. And I just told him, how did you? And I'm thinking to myself, come on, Forrest, are you for real? I said, well, it hasn't even been a year. It was like six months ago, whatever. Or, or no, it was a year. A year ago with Pam, you did the video, blah, blah, blah. Uh, everybody knows about the fucking hammer. And, and what, what they didn't know is that it was a claw hammer. He never used the word claw anywhere. And, and it's in the McCracken Research Center. And I went back to him with claw hammer. And you know how he looks through his emails through certain words? I believe that Cody is one of those words. <laughs> or anything to do with Plains Indians or anything to do with Wyoming. I think there's a certain keywords that he would read those emails. Because uh, well, otherwise, why would he reply to it? I didn't, you know. And he didn't answer my question, if you noticed in the emails. He doesn't say, I'll give you permission. But I, I was putting him on the spot intentionally. And he knew it. He knew it. Because I was going to turn around. Okay. I, there's some things I don't show, you know, because I don't. it's too private. And I don't know. But well, like I, I told him, I was like, you can't be a hypocrite, Boris. You clearly made it very clear that you don't agree with having things behind ropes and glass and people should put their hands on. And I said, so I'm going to put my hands on just Henry Sharp's desk. I'm going to put my hands on that that shelf and my hands on. And 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 I said, you know, come on, you got to do it, right? You can't be a hypocrite. But then he still replied to me, and that was when he told me about the uh, – yeah, the way I remember it, me and the curator went out and we dug a hole and slid it under the foundation. Well, why would he have to dig a hole and slide it under the foundation? If there was a, uh, an access panel to the air conditioning system underneath there, he never did answer that question. And that was when he came back and he goes, I'm going to, you know, let, let me know what you find out because I'm going to do a story about it. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know why they moved it. I don't know. My guess is when they're putting in the fucking heating or whatever, if they put it in after the fact that when they were digging around underneath the foundation to run the, the ductwork, they came across the hammer. And put it into the museum or something oh. again. It's a poor forest. And I was like, hammer. Because he, he's probably, I don't know. What do you, what's the word for it when you're, um, I used the wrong word earlier. It's not spiritualism. But it's something bad, like, like a bad omen or something for, for not putting the hammer back. Superstitious. Where, yeah. Like, it's like he's superstitious. I want that fucking thing back on there. And, and by the way, this is kind of off topic, but I was telling the street in private the other day. I watched that Sant, Sant, his name, what is it? Uh, Santi, not Santiago. The, what the hell is it? It's Santello. Santello, Peter. And he's talking, and he's talking to that man, and uh, uh, they're showing all that Anasazi pottery. And he's like, don't, don't touch it. You know? and so now all this shit's running through my mind. Here, I have an opportunity to go to New Mexico and go on a Pueblo. And touch pottery. And now I'm thinking, well, fuck, man. If there's some kind of bad omen or superstition, maybe I shouldn't touch any of that shit disrupt it. 
you know, maybe there's a reason why, why they leave it laying around the ground like that. Um, I don't know. I'm still going to go there, but will I touch any of that stuff? I'm beginning to wonder. I mean, think about it. It's not a complete pottery. It's going to be a shard. Like, so why, why is it that important that I, I take it? I might photograph I'm it. I'm not so sure that the tribal people are really superstitious about that stuff, but that, that helps them keep their claim on their lands by thinking that way and acting that way. I mean, they got fucked over royally. So if that's what they got to do to try, try yeah, to yeah. keep things from being taken from them, you know, good luck to them. Yeah, yeah, luck. Yeah, you say that. I, yeah, I'm um, little lunch I could. Tyler, um, yeah, no, of course I seen that 2006 interview. That's what um, the last time I was live, Davio was on there because Davio's the one that recorded him. It's still on his channel. It's still there now. That 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 Cody interview to me was better than Moby Dickens and better than uh, uh, craft uh, collected works. He reveals a lot in that interview. Uh, it, it was it was an excellent video, excellent, absolutely. And that's one of the other things that made me lead to Wyoming and lead to there's something in that Cody Museum. And and I read I, the thr I read the thrill, the chase, the scrapbooks, weekly words, things like that. And I the the big picture, the moral of the story. Um, I didn't focus in if he mentioned a city. I didn't focus in on, oh, research the city and start. No, I looked at the overall, what's he trying to say here in all his words, instead of focusing in on particular areas, what do they all add up? What is the moral of the story? What's happening, Tyler? Not much, just doing my laundry real quick. Yeah, by the way, Street, that's that's what, what I'm saying, kind of. Yeah. What I realized after that, that Cody incident is that the big picture is this. The big picture is that it's related to the Plains Indians. I think that's the big picture, in my opinion. It's related to the natives, either the Pueblo people or the, the Plains Indians up north or both. It's something to do with that. And all the artists is all focused around that type of subject matter. So he's just reinforcing the fact. That I, now, of course, Eugene believes that it's deeper than that. He believed, and I don't want to discuss everything he told me, but the statues in the in the garden there at the Cody Museum are positioned in a specific way, and they're looking in a certain direction. Um, and and I don't I don't know. I used to think the same way too, but I don't know about that anymore. I think it's just more of a general thing that 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 I think that fucking hammer, the hammer. I mean, look at where it came from. It came from the fucking right next to the Custer battlefield. It's it, it's right there. On the confluence of the Little Bighorn and the Bighorn Rivers, just north. Let me ask, let me ask you this way: Have you watched the Jordy uh, Forsen uh, interview? Yeah, that's what I just said. I replied to you. Um, well, you might want to go back to it and watch it. There's something in particular with McCracken that he he uh, points at, and I saw it and I said, "Oh fucking shit!" All right, wait one second before you you say that. Um, yeah, uh, Davio was on last week on my show, and we were talking because Davio's the one that recorded it, put that video out there. I mean, he recorded oh, yeah, it yeah. in the McCracken Center. But so what'd oh, you yeah. discover, if you don't mind saying? So if you go back and watch, he points directly exactly the towards the uh, direct location where McCracken's cabin is located. You if mean you Sharp's cabin? Watch. You mean Sharp's cabin? No, 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 not the Sharp cabin. McCracken's actual cabin that he uh, owned, that he put all the, uh, like all the uh, museum stuff in, in the, in the attic. What's Mc, where's McCracken's? Are you talking about the Buffalo? Because I know Buffalo Bill's childhood house was there. And then it just McCracken for every sharp cabin. McCracken had his own house that he used way before Buffalo Center of the West became a thing. And it was over there where my area is. Oh, there's also, I don't remember the name of the place, but you probably do. There's an old, like an old Western town out there. And that's actually where, yeah, that's where Cody used to physically be way back. Way back. That's that's the original location of Cody. And well, then they moved it. Back, actually. The old trail town used to be at this site location I have as well. Yeah, that's Believe a that's a cool that's did you I ever go there? Did you ever go there? I, I, yeah, I was I was supposed to go there, but obviously I, I was positive with COVID. 
And oh. I was coughing all of your old people. And my mom and dad were like, you might need to leave because you're coughing all these old folks. So I was all right. So I went back to my uh, to my mom and dad's place that they rented. So, yeah, I need to see all of it or any of it because I had COVID. But I definitely want to go back and see all of it. Yeah, you got to get tell me more about this McCracken cabin. I was not aware of that. Where now? Where Where is it physically at now? It's obviously it's always been located over uh, west of the Buffalo Bills in the west off the dirt road. Oh wow! And it's still there. So yeah, huh? I thought I go back and look because he went right exactly directly towards it. I said, "Oh shit!" Now, now, so what is your thought about though? Because that's a structure. So do you do you actually do think there might be a clue there, or do you think the chest? Well, I mean, it's a physical well, it's structure. Just- so it's it's a whole there's like a whole like complete puzzle that is put together when you start putting pieces together, not just with the McCracken cabin, then but the crap McCracken cabin also used to be Don Martinez's tackle shop. I mean, dude, like it also once was uh the Old Trail Town, which was an outfit just company that Bob Edgar and George Jobich owned together, which was like you know a little hunting company where you know you hire like. People where you have like hire people and they like go out and like you know hunt with people, you know, hunt grizzly bears and stuff like that. And I've traced it so far back, dude. Like, oh my god, like before Bob Edgar, it was Victor Arland who owned like a post office company in that area, too, just in that same location, like with the cabin as well. Wow, man, you know, I don't know if you want to do it on streets or my, I would love to, or on your channel, I would love to listen to you explain. Like detailed, so like on Google Earth, the stuff you do. I never heard it before. I think it's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah, dude. I, I literally discovered this area. Obviously, I told uh, Amy, uh, what's her name? Oh, geez. I can't remember her last name, but she was always, she used to be on Candy's channel every now and then. But me and I was told her it, and because I discovered it when I was on the way back from Cody to Wilmington. And I was like, shit, it was already too late to go back. So I've always planned to go back there and actually like go boots on the ground in the area. That sounds so, like a very interesting place. And yeah, it's, but, it's it's not owned by the museum either. It's not on the museum's property. No, it's not. It's nearby the museum, but it's not on the property of the museum. Correct. Nice. Nice. That's fucking awesome, man. And why? And that's exactly why Forrest Finn said, I obviously told Cynthia that he said Cody when he hit it. And also that he hit it in one afternoon. And Yo, why, Yeah, he could definitely make it there in one afternoon. <laughs> yeah. And that's why Peggy was waiting for him somewhere. Over in Cody, because you know he was close by. That's why I told everybody, you really you think he's gonna go from freaking Cody Yellowstone and leave a whole bunch of perverted, divided men with his fucking wife? No, that's stupid. That's giving uh, his you know, his buddies the chance to you know make a stupid move. That's just. Did stupid. any of you notice Sharks first and last initials are the same as Jack's Stoops? Uh Jonathan. Wait, what? Jonathan, what's his middle name? No, uh, just the first and last, not the middle. Yeah, J- J- Joseph Sharp and Jack Stu. Yep. And also John Ford. John Ford uh, Climber is JF. And page 99 on the map is JF. I've always wondered who JF was, but from what I remember, because uh, J- Dick and Gypsy told me about JF. And from what I remember, uh, Forrest Fan told Dig and Gypsy that it was a uh, war civilian correspondent that had to do with JF. And yeah. that the Phase 99 map was drawn in 19, I'm going to go off the limb, 68, I think maybe. I have to go back and look. There's an exact year that Dig and Gypsy sent me with the email that Forrest Fan told her. Yeah, when I, did, when I did a video about that map, I cut to a picture with Forrest Fan sitting in his plane, and you could see the gauges. And you can see that he's currently banking the plane in the left-hand turn. <clears throat> and I pointed out in there that that I believe Forrest Spence flying right near the spot where the chest is. And um, I talked about the, ga- the gauges in there. Forrest Spence <laughs> sent me an email about that. He, 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 he goes, you were wrong about a lot of things. Said, you know what? He didn't say I was wrong about him flying over the treasure chest. Though. Didn't say that. He was more concerned about the gauges on there. The, uh, well, see, that- a lot of people misinterpret that, and that's funny that you say that because the reason the plane was in page 99 was because of George Dobbins. Which is, George Dobbins made a promise to Forrest Finn that 
if he came back alive from the Vietnam War, that for, uh, George Dobbins would take him out into the Starlight Country, North Dakota, and would uh, go up with him to find uh, buffalo skulls and uh, airheads. And if you read him through Too Far to Walk, he uh, brags in the, uh, what's that African guy's name in that chapter? I forget what it's called. To look. And he brags about the Cody Complex uh, uh, Arrowhead or whatever it's called. Go back and look, see if we can find it. Man, that's just I'm uh, you, I'm surprised. I never I'm surprised you don't talk about that more, man. The stuff you're I've talking tried, about, like people, is like extremely interesting, man. I've tried, but I was shut down constantly in the Discord server, and they all shut me down like I didn't know shit. So, oh well, you I mean yeah. you could uh, I mean. Uh, not well. We got a lot of people on here now, but I mean, I don't know. I mean, if you didn't want to do it on your channel, I would fire up a Zoom and just me and you, and I would just like you could talk for a fucking hour if you want to show everything. I don't care. Yeah, I, I'm definitely interested in any anything in Wyoming like that for sure, but especially stuff I've never heard. Everything you're telling me, I didn't even know. Well, then again, I didn't know who John Clymer was, so I didn't. Associate him that tightly with um, Cody, but that's chapter yeah. thirty-one. If Sasoko is here, that's the guy I was talking about. What, what page number? Was it was page number? Show, but it's like what the page number. Yeah, see, so Eugene just said it too. Because the Cody Museum does hold the answers to the poem and leads to segment. See, I've always thought that too that, that the Cody Museum was involved somehow. There's something that you have to see there, or that would be a really big hint, or would you know? I I just you know, and, and I narrowed it down to in the cabin, in the fucking cabin. It has something to do with that cabin, something to do with the hammer. I don't know why else he would have honed in on that so quick and it went above and beyond because he don't, because I was talking about a solve, basically. I was going there due to a solve and here he is replying to it. How do you know about the hammer? Like normally so he'll say, where does your warm water salt? No. Uh, well, what do you know about the hammer? Oh, so on page know. 161 of Too Far to Walk, he says, I said not wanting to stop bragging about my new Cody, Tom, Cody Complex Paleo Point. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm Too Far to Walk. I got to find that fucking cabin now and look at that area. You got me interested now, man. I got a lot of shit to do. <laughs> That's cool, though. Uh, uh I'll show you a picture of it in Google Maps. So I'll just, uh, obviously put my camera and I'll pull it up real quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. About. That'd be cool. Um, if you could do that, so at least give us a starting point. If you don't mind, I'm not trying to pressure you with anything. But no, you did. I've always shown it, man. Everyone's like, "What were we looking at?" And I'm like, "Yeah, you'll see." Um, By the way, isn't Galaxy looking near um, near there too? Because Galaxy email or replied to my video about something. Similar, not not the cabin, but he replied about and I, uh, something with the climber, and I believe that he was looking near Cody also. Galaxy. So this is the cabin I'm talking about. If you zoom out, it is literally it's right there. Where's the and Cody Museum in relation to it? Right there. That's the Cody Museum where the arrow is, and then the cabin is right over here. Ah, uh, that's definitely not on their property. I no, know where their property. their property line goes out pretty far, actually, into some yeah, areas. It also goes across the river. Um, yeah. Wow. That's very interesting. Yeah, because obviously when I first was looking into Cody, I was always big on the uh, Joseph Henry Sharp cabin. And then that's when Gals and Joes and Candy and uh, Huli were all like, no, no, no. Oh, no, that's the, wait a minute. Let me, let me say Gals and Ghost. That, that's the female I've been trying to talk about. That's the one who, was, who uh, I guess she was working with Candy, and she discovered that that sleeve in Shiloh's picture is of John Clymer. Thanks. I didn't. I, I couldn't remember. Now you say Gallatin Ghost. That's a female, right? Yeah, she's the redhead female, yeah. She's okay, so female. she 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 is the, the woman that's responsible uh, for determining what that sleeve was. She's the one that gets the credit for that. But but Gallatin Ghost was also, um, had mentioned to K Pro, that she didn't really obtain all of the, uh, like she doesn't know the, the actual relevance yet. She's still working on it, and that's what I was trying to talk about the other day. I, you know, I don't know why Ben popped a set into it because I wasn't talking about that shit. I don't care what they no, do in the score. 
Galton Ghost has tried to shut down now my hole because uh, she said that she was she has looked up and down like a lot of the portion of nine my hole in that whole river and she found, came up with nothing. Yeah, I know. Like I said, I know two searchers um, that have video. They claim I have never seen it. They went across the river and they took video. You know where that oil tree is that 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 um, Rudy points yeah. out. They basically yeah. walked all along there, and they walked straight across, just like where they did, straight across from the rock, literally straight down, straight south to the Dry Creek area. And they have video footage in that area and in them clearings, and there was nothing there in 2017. So if they do find something there, um, it was clearly moved there. No, yeah, it wasn't moved at all, to be honest with you. So I mean, the... Well, I'm just saying there's a lot of people that, that disagree with that, but these people are waiting for the opportunity because as soon as the, if Shiloh were to come out or anybody were to come out and try to claim it was there, they're going to come out with the evidence to refute it, and people are going to look bad. That's when I just opened my popcorn. I don't even know if it's true or not, but there's a lot of people that are that are not happy with what's going on. I'm going to show you something real quick. So obviously where Don Little Park is right over here, Right over uh, here, right. Yeah, right over here. There's a gate right here, and it, on the gate it says BBHC, which is Buffalo Bill Historical Center. And then now, where, where is that in relation to the cabin? Where is that relation yeah. to the cabin? No, where is the cabin in, re in relation to that mark on the street right there? So there's a hole that you can see it. Uh, let me go back. Let me go. Uh, so there's a whole trail that leads all the way down to the cabin. Oh, right from where the date is. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Now, is the cabin still physically there, or is it just the footing? No, it's still, yeah, it's still physically there. Oh. Do you know who owns the property? Did you look at it up? You can't find nothing. nothing really? I've tried everything. Wow. You have to, like, trace, like, step, step by step by step if you're actually going to do it. And had to put two and two together to actually figure everything out. Hey, maybe you're the owner of it. Get a hold of the title. That's your land. <laughs> Could you imagine you know, that? Do you imagine and that? Here's, here's the most funniest thing, thing of all. So obviously you've seen it's the sand pit. If you look on the thrill of chase, obviously you've looked at the thrill of chase before. What do you see right there? What? He's sand is like sand of the water pipe. Yeah. Them. And then there's a uh there's a lodgepole pipe fence. And let me pull up the Google photos. And by the way, that's a blaze that says water on it. That's a blaze the rock ain't. What do you see there? It's the same area. Oh, wow. Nice pool party thing, brother. The, the Sandy Lot. <laughs> That's some cool shit, man. You've been holding back on us, you know, Street? He's holding back cool stuff. That's staying right, man. I think you I might think be the one of the nookers. No, hell no. no hell no. But I have used the nookers for, to gain some information. That's why Cynthia is one of the motherfuckers that I used to get the information that Forrest Fan told her that uh that Forrest Fan told her that he hit it on uh, or he hit it in, hit it when he was in Cody, and that's how I found that shit out. Oh yeah, yeah man, dude, he he went with that that video when him and Peggy are at the Rendezvous Royale. That's fucking when he hit it in September of uh, 2010. That's exactly when he fucking did it. I don't care what anybody says. Oh, I heard he hit it in the fucking no. He hit it when he was there in September. Guaranteed, man. That motherfucker's smiling there. He was there with Peggy. Um, Shiloh probably flew him up there. He could have easily took the treasure chest, put it in the plane ahead of time. Well, I think, no, think Forrest Fan actually said he rented a white uh, suburban SUV. Right, but no, what I'm, what, what I'm saying, Tyler, before they leave Santa Fe, all Forrest had to do was go slide those hangar doors open Put the treasure chest in the plane, and then leave. And then Silo uh, would walk, go to the plane, and fly them up there. And then when they all went to the hotel, Forrest goes to the plane, take the treasure chest out, put it in the rental car. Silo would have no fucking idea that he helped them nope. fucking hide the chest. I guess so. I think he hid it, and in my opinion, he hid it at three a.m. in the morning, lying in the hospital bed. That's when he hid it. Well, how does it, but he said he did two trips in the afternoon. Yeah. Well, 3 a.m. is not in the afternoon. 
unless he was all right. I I I know what you're gonna say. All right, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're gonna say. Well, yeah, he was laying in bed and he yeah, was no, reflecting. He was reflecting back. Yeah, no, he went two, he went two trips in his mind. Don't test them. Don't That's test right. Them. I mean, Street always puts that on there. There's not a fucking thing I could say about it. Um, <laughs> think about the story he tells about that 3 a.m. The most mo- mundane thoughts. How many hours he slept? He's reflecting on his entire fucking life. The yeah. stupid, sh- the shit that we don't ever think about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we won't think about it. Who goes and really thinks about it? You know. Damn it! I need more well, coffee. I'll be right back. I'll make some coffee. I will wait for you to come back, and I'll tell you a little thing. That I, I can, I can, I can hear you. I'll listen. Just continue talking. All right, sweet. Man. I'm gonna tell you a little secret that I obviously I've told. Him, uh, I don't know his name. We don't know whatever his name is in Discord. But uh, I thought about this a while back ago when I was tracing my steps with the camera stuff. So obviously the last person I ever told the captain was very attractive. And the reason we it was you know obviously nobody's gonna find it on the internet is because obviously lawyers were involved because obviously you know the will. And Harold McCracken, Harold McCracken put in his will that when he uh, Harold dies, that Forsman would own the whole entire property. What are your thoughts, Troy? I think he went out to smoke. No, I know. We'll see what he says when he gets when I when he gets yeah. back. But that's some interesting shit. When I thought about it, I said, "Holy shit!" And that's why I'm not gonna find nothing. I mean, yeah, I, I tried to find stuff that McCracken. I couldn't find nothing. Zippo, nothing. No, I couldn't find nothing. No, yeah, no, there's not. There's nothing with him. There's yeah, nothing. There's like nothing. I'm like, this is fucking odd. Yeah, no, it's odd. Even the, like, I even had to Google the fuck out of George Dobbins. There's, there's slim to nothing on him either. Like, there's a, maybe a, one or two websites that's slim on information, but that's about it. Yeah, very slim, couple lines, and that's it. Yeah, it's it's weird. It's weird as fuck. So yeah, so to me, that's nothing. So, uh, you, y'all know me and, and how I like to dive real deep, like out into the, the metaphysical and ph- philosophical world. And I think uh, one of the things that Forrest Fenn, as, as you guys are alluding to, is Forrest wrote, wrote a book, The Thrill of the Chase, trying to sum up his life. And the reason I think he did that was because he he was faced with that prospect of death. You know, that finite question that everybody must ask and wonder about themselves. You know, how do they exist after death, you know? And I think Forrest, you know, uh, relayed that by, uh, by writing his life story and sharing some of the things he learned along the way that help, help him, uh, kind of come to his own conclusions about, you know, life, about time, about love, about people, and about places. And I think those are the the words that would sum up the thrill of the chase, like like Street was trying to uh, go towards, you know. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, if I don't know how many other people have been, you know, uh, faced that question, you know, that deep, seated question you know because yeah we all take for granted every day we breathe in we get up go to work or not go to work go out do our things not do our things eat don't eat drink don't drink i mean we take for granted that our bodies just automatically do these things you know people have all these hard things they have to think about their struggles in life their traumas their happy times the best moments of their lives, their accomplishments, their failures. And to, to see your life, uh, you know, in a book and, and how it's written, I think kind of shaped force a little bit better, but not just for himself, but for, for a lot of other people, a lot of other searchers and stuff, you know, but I, like I said, I think it's that, that question of force alluded on page 15 about death. He alludes in other uh, chapters about when his casket closes um, or not his casket, but when, when the tackle box closes, you know, to me, that's representation that he's talking about 
when 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 his his casket closes, you know, things what will happen? Did he sit there and ponder the the life questions? How how long he slept? You know, how good of a, a husband he was? How good of a father he was? You know, did he leave leave a life worth? The, the inspiration or exploration that somebody else would come in and, and, and see and pick up and, and move along with or carry with them. So, I mean, yeah, it, it's an interesting question to truly ask yourself and think about, you know, and I think that's one of the things Forrest alluded to in the Thrill of the Chase is if you discard time, you think about love, and you think about the people you're with and you're thinking about the places that you're at and you're thinking about the foods you're eating and the things you're drinking. I mean, you can sum up and make, uh, you know, your entire life come out in a one day story, so to speak, but also be able to take that one day story, share it. And then um, that way it passes on even when you're gone as you're sharing those things uh, that you learned and made positive and hopefully will be positive to other people, you know, and it's, it's that type of thing. And they think um, one of the, I think is Maximilius the first kind of makes a point of, you know, if you, if you are to be remembered, you know, beyond what you do here in this time, then, you know, you should probably write down, uh, at least at the very least your own life perspective because nobody else will nobody else will write down your life perspective nobody and then you can pay them a whole lot of money and you can tell them things but it's not it's not your life perspective you know what I mean they're changing and adding things and suggesting things and like that but to write your own life perspective the things you learn the things you carry from others and that hopefully the things that you can pass on that others will pick up and use. I think that was what Forrest was also teaching and sharing, you know, carried well, over. Yeah. I mean, the thrill of the chase though is, I mean, yeah, you would do that in an autobiography where you do it yourself as opposed to a biography that's written by somebody else. <laughs> but, the, but, but the thrill of the chase, the memoir is not an autobiography. It's a, it's only a focus on a specific aspect of his life. And to me, that's all the the stuff that he learned from the the native Indians throughout his life. Um, but by the way, Tyler, I don't know if you noticed this or not. And it's it's not an exact positioning, but think about that picture that Shiloh put out there. Okay, now imagine that Willie is north, sitting in a chair out by the window, in for his friends uh, in Peggy's garden. Um, if the binder now a binder it would be like information right and then you got bip which is artwork all of that stuff is at the museum and if you look the book for Cl climber is to the left and slightly north of that and that's kind of where that cabin is what you're talking about right where the x is formed by the two flowers and then the right north of that x is the uh, cabin so it could be like some kind of representation of the Cody Museum itself. The BIP would represent the uh, the art in in there, okay? And then the binder, of course, is just a bunch of information, and that's the McCracken Research Center. It's a binder of uh, information from Clymer, from Forrest with Joseph Henry Sharp, and from a bunch of other things. And like, um, I, look, you know, I don't, I don't know if you all noticed, but forget about the picture, the inside. Look out that picture window and what is overshadowing the inside. The waterfall. The waterfall. A waterfall, which is where yeah. my song is. Yeah. No, I, ironic, I, 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 yeah, I didn't want to mention that because people are uh, trying to tie it to a song, but I'm trying to well, tie it to no, a I meant just how, how Forrest paid tribute, went into hostile area to pay tribute to that waterfall because he attributed his thoughts in that waterfall as to saving his life to send him home. Right, right, in Vietnam. Yeah, in Vietnam, it's the waterfall. So, yeah. But I, I was trying to point out that if you notice the placement, it's wrong. Well, it, it, if Willie's north, it does have the the, the uh, climber cabin placed properly, sort of. And then the binder and the uh, bit book would be over where the Cody Museum is. And the binder 
would represent the, the Kraken Research Center, the information. And then, of course, BIP is a rep representation of the artwork. And that's what you have with Just Memory Sharp and Climber artwork. Um, that's kind of the association that I see with it. But I wasn't aware of what Tyler was talking about. I really find that really interesting now. Really. I, 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 I had no idea. He never mentioned that stuff before, Tyler. Now it's on my mind. Well, yeah, I mean, no, I mean, I think it's it's cool, very cool. I've never heard hey, listen, that, that guy's cabin ever, ever mentioned. I heard the old West Town mentioned, the Cody Museum. I've never heard a climber referenced that way, never until now. No, that's cool. Did you mention that to the lady that um, searched her that discovered that, that it is the climber book that's in there? Did you talk about her and Candy with that? I don't I told Candy about it. I told everybody different about it. And I, that's why that's one of the reasons why I got banned because it wasn't just put, put screenshots about it. And I was told to not do so. And obviously, you know, other people can post their own screenshots and about their solvent solution. But the moment I do it, I get uh, hammered for it. So it is what it is. But yeah, dude, I've mentioned it to everybody. Well, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. K Pro kind of did that to Candy too. Now, I agree with K Pro with the, with the, as far as with the, uh, like she didn't seem well. She was interested, but she she was kind of pushing back on a lot of hearsay regarding the auction website. But she's also pushing back on other things that were valid that that Candy mentioned because Candy showed the picture that was from the woman you just mentioned, where she discovered that book, and and K Pro was like, yeah, but you know, there's no attachments to that, and and that's what pisses me off because that group and Ben was trying to argue with me about it. I, I don't really care, but whether or not he's a nooker, it doesn't matter. If if you don't fit their agenda, my understanding is they give you a hard time. I can't say that per se, and I've never been in there. But, I mean, the way Ben was talking to me, it was like, oh, like, I'm not aware of these things. Go with, I'm, I, I'm fully aware of what the groups are in uh, Discord and Facebook. and They're all over the place. They're not just there. They've existed all along, even on Jenny's. But those were also the places that were – the breeding grounds to controversy like uh, forest friends, sexual escapades and pedophile. And, and I don't want to be a part of that. So it's not a, it doesn't mean I don't, I don't like Ben. It just means I don't, I don't really care what they have to say, but the difference between what we're doing is we're out here in public discussing it openly in public. They're hiding it behind closed doors and then compounding it by saying, Oh, we got inside reference from silo or we got inside Thank information. You. And I, I, I don't like that. I don't want to be a part of that anymore. I'm not going to be on any show where they're going to discuss that kind of stuff. I don't want to discuss the controversy. I, I'm not going to be a part of that, period. I agree. They ain't got nothing. To be honest with you, what I know, they ain't got shit. If I if I'm aware of what they know, which is obviously not my whole. If that, and I'm, I can tell you right off the bat, not my whole is not it with the goddamn shit. Dude, I mean... Like, you really do not need any outside info. Like, everything you need is in the Thrill of the Chase and Too Far to Walk. I don't really think Once Upon a Walk has nothing to do with it, any of the salt solution stuff. Well, Except and the museum. The and the museum. That's a valid place because if the clues send you to the museum, anything you learn at that museum is wisdom. It's knowledge that you're going to gain. It's perfectly valid because you don't need to do any research outside the museum. So it counts. Just like with the medicine wheel, I don't need to do it uh, inside, and you know, searching outside the bounds. So it's the same thing with the Cody Museum. I mean, you're absolutely right. That doesn't require a backstory on Forrest Friend. If the clues uh -huh. lead you there and the information is there, it's perfectly valid. It's unbiased. You're using information you're learning mentioned along the way. The back of the Nooker Group and Buffalo Bill, who is AKA Ben, Dark Greg, and K Pro is a prime example of pushback. If you, and it had nothing to do with, um, that's the ironic part. It had nothing to do with um, information going against them, even though I have ever, I have always gone, gone against their beliefs and where they tried to lead people. But that's a prime example of how far they will go. They will do FOIAs on people. They will track your phone. They will try to hack you. They will try to, um, discredit you, humiliate you. That is their game plan, man. It always has been since I've been watching them. 
and I don't want to be a part of it. I mean, I, I like like I tried to say to Candy, it's not that I don't. I dislike Ben. I just don't. I I don't. Agree. What they're doing is perfectly fine to them. I, I don't want to be a part of it. That's all. Simple as that. But who? What's the name? I got to write down. What was that name again of that woman? Um, Tyler Gallatin Ghost. Gallatin Ghost. Ghost. Yeah. Gallatin Ghost. And 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 Candy pointed it out during the show. She showed the picture. So Gallatin Ghost is the one that discovered the the book thing. I, and you should probably she should probably hear what you're saying about your connection that that book would have. I, th I find that very fascinating. I don't know. Certainly K Pro didn't mention it. Um, they will now. It's on here. They'll probably be discussing it in Discord, and somebody else will come out and take the credit for it. Uh, oh, yeah, but, most definitely. Yeah, I like to mention names. Like I said, I, I really felt bad during that video because I couldn't remember her name. Gallatin Ghost. Yeah, Gallatin Ghost and Candy. So Candy was working with Gallatin Ghost, and Gallatin Ghost discovered that the, the, the sleeve is the book. Yeah. They just, according to Kay Proto, they couldn't make a connection. Uh, but she was trying to, she was pushing back on Candy. So eventually, um, you know, I, I well, I'll bet you in about a month she'll make the connection to try to take the the, the credit herself. That's what oh, sure she will. And she ain't gonna so. she she won't mention Gallatin Ghost. She won't mention Tyler. She won't mention nope. Candy. She ain't gonna mention anybody. Nope. 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 They're using them people, but but there it is, K Pro. You said you could that they couldn't come up with a connection. You know what, K Pro? I bet you they did come up with connections, but Gallatin Ghost. Is keeping it tight lipped because she doesn't want you to find out about it. That's, That's why I'm very being consistent on what I say. That's why I wouldn't do it on my channel, which is smart because I know people won't watch that shit. Right. Right. Exactly. But I find that really, I, I, I don't want to keep boring everybody now, but I definitely want to talk to you later, Tyler, at some time about your stuff. I'm, I want to go look at that. Yeah, can you show that location one more time that you're saying the cabin is? I'm let me, yeah, let me, yeah, let, let me. Program, which shows me the public. Uh, All right, hold up, uh, Tyler. Uh, when you do it, give me the. I'm going to try to get the coordinates to the place in Google Earth, and I'll paste for anybody that wants to go look. If he was saying it's on the like that desert section next, just west of the the city street where it looks like it's cut off, then. Yeah, it's showing it as private Wyoming. No, it's a rattlesnake mountain. It's private. It starts right off of Monument Street, and the Dort Road goes all the way down. Hey, Ty, right. Ty, Tyler, I'm gonna try yeah. to, I'm gonna try to uh, share my Google Earth in 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 in, uh, in here. <clears throat> Do you see my Google Earth? Yeah. Yes, yeah, see you. Here's Old Trail Town. Where is it in relationship to Old Trail Town? There's Old Trail Town right here. Old Trail Town's right here. I'm zoomed in on it. Yeah. If you go uh, diagonally north, if you go northeast. Uh, Over here? Towards St. Anthony's Catholic, Catholic Church. Oh, keep, going, keep going northeast. Uh, I don't know where you're talking about now. Northeast. All right. Old right Trail Town. Go northeast of uh, Old Trail Town. North, east, two rivers okay. down. Two rivers down. Right where the uh, it's nearby the Saint Anthony Catholic Church. Zoom out. All right. So you're talking about up here. No, keep going up. Keep going up. It's way. No, 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 no. That's Old Trail Town. You go. You zoom out. I'll show you. I actually, what I can actually just like luckily we have the color stuff. So go this way. It'll let me do it. Yeah, don't don't look on YouTube because yeah. it's a big delay. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's uh, he's. I know where he's looking. Yeah, that's like Big Lemon Land so far. Where he's looking on. All right, he's, 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 yeah. map. he's drawing on my screen. So right here at the end of your red line. Go no go all oh, northeast of that where that red line goes. Okay. All the way far two rivers down. But yeah, you're almost where your last arrow was. Well, I'm on the Buffalo Bill Center right now. Yeah, now go no go west of that Buffalo Bill. Yeah. All the way over that. Oh, over right here, there. over here. Yeah, right there. Yeah, right. yeah. So where's that cabin in that area? No, right there. 
where that white spot yeah. is over here. <laughs> Just join your screen. Center of that yellow circle. Oh, right here. Yeah. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. So just to give people a perspective of where that is, um, yeah, let me clear off the annotation. Let me see. How do I do that? All right. So, yeah, here's the Buffalo Bill Center directly west. Now, the interesting thing, I believe,